Good morning. I'm Justin Beers. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes you to our Sunday worship service. We are happy you have joined us in praise and worship of our Heavenly Father. If you would like to receive our Sunday bulletin, which contains our service information, please call our church office at 513-863-5774 to have it sent to you. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. We will then read responsively Psalm chapter 65, verses 1 through 13. The second lesson is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And the gospel lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. The lector is Ken Gerald. Our service is conducted by Pastor Joe Schrock, and the organist is Sarah Kim. We now return you to our worship service. stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of Almighty God, let us confess our sin. For those that want to kneel, feel free to do so. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that we do not do trust, not your, trust abundance, your abundance, and, and we, we deny your presence in our lives. lives. We, we place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. efforts. We, we fail, fail to, to believe that you provide enough for all. all. We, we abuse your good creation for our own for benefit. benefit. We, we fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We, we sin in thought, word, word and deed. By your grace, grace forgive us. Through your love, love renew us. us. And, and in your spirit, spirit lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we stand, we sing as, as rain from the clouds.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. The first lesson today is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. God's word to Israel's exiles is as sure and effective as never failing precipitation. Their return to the Holy Land in a new exodus is cheered on by singing mountains and by trees that clap their hands. And now for the lesson. For as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, 
but it shall accomplish that which I pur purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come the, up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be the Lord for a memorial, for an, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We now read responsibly Psalm 65 verses 1 through 13 in your bulletin. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer. To you, all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are. But you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you, sh will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas. The roaring of their waves and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain for you so provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness. And your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. And the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans. There is no condemnation for those who live in Christ. God sent Christ to accomplish what the law was unable to do, condemn sin and free us from its death-dealing ways. The Spirit now empowers proper actions and values in our lives and gives us the promise of resurrection, resurrected life. And now the reading. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on, the, on Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also th through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. Holy 
gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. In Matthew's gospel, both Jesus and his disciples sow the seed of God's word by proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Now in a memorable parable, Jesus explains why this good news produces different results in those who hear. And here begins the gospel. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him, they got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart, that is, what is sown on the path. As for what is sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures for only a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> be seated and we'll continue with the announcements. The biggest one of course some of you saw on our Facebook page the the fact that the state of Ohio has developed a, a scale for the COVID crisis and uh, of course Butler County has been one of the counties with the biggest issue uh, last Wednesday being almost purple and so council has developed a policy regarding that with back-to-back -back weeks in red which at this point it looks like we probably will be. Um, the service will go back to just being a streaming service and, the, and everything will close down. And for whenever we hit purple, that's just like a, uh, I forget which snow level it is, but it's an automatic closure. So just kind of pay attention on Wednesday when the governor releases his color for our county. But I would say it's probably likely that next Sunday will be just streaming. Also next Sunday, whether we're officially open or not, um, Lauren Ritzenberger is going to be baptized and Lynn and a couple members of her family will be here. Also, and this is for everybody, both those that are listening either on the radio or online, and of course, those of us here, when we do the invitation, which is what I say right after the words of institution, I will pause before I bring the communion elements down and I will commune the people in the radio or cyber world. So I will say I will do the bread and the and the Christ's blood shed for you and then I will come down and put the tray down. So that won't affect us as much, but just so that everybody that has communion elements uh, is ready when we get to that point. Also, if you're interested in having communion elements brought to you, I believe next weekend is the next, am I correct on that? Yes, all right, Robin's shaking her head. Next weekend, next Saturday, and well, and technically Friday as well. Um, if you're interested, you just have to let Julia know. But once again, they'll be making the rounds and delivering a month at a time. So those of you that already have it, you can probably wait. Those of you that haven't, just make sure that Julia has your name. Let's see here. And then before I get started, um, today's back of the bulletin, and everybody should have it, whether it's here in 
real world or through your email, but the back of the bulletin is particularly good today. So let's begin with the chat. You know, this parable is an interesting one. Of course, I grew up in a major farming county, so it, it probably had a little bit more relevant or relevance than Butler does now with half the land and subdivisions and so forth. But I always wondered, and perhaps you did too, when you thought about what seeds were doing what, it seemed like an awful lot of waste. Now, some of that is, is old German thinking, well, you know, you know saving some money and, and not wasting what you buy and then having it die or get eaten. But some of it's also the fact that we know in our own lives when seeds are sown, that sometimes things like potential don't happen. Whether it's somebody dying early or somebody maybe not doing as well in school as they could or us on jobs or, or potential relationships. But there's always that aspect of loss. That the seeds that are sown that don't bear the hundredfold or the sixtyfold or the thirtyfold have somehow been a hurt and a pain and a loss. You know, Jesus goes on to explain the parable, and, and I think that's helpful. It's one of the few parables that he truly explains. But you notice that in all of that, there's still the, the understanding that everything that is done in the parable is a risk. Because we don't truly know what is good soil and what is not. Now, in the real world, we would try to plow and get all the rocks out and try to keep the weeds out of our garden and so forth and spray for bugs. But in our day-to-day -day lives, rarely do we get to spend that much time when we're sowing to be able to try to clear the path. Of course, in our immediate circles, we do try to have a developed relationship whether it's at work or in our families or, or even when we do the hunger ministry to try to build a relationship with the people we serve. But at the end of the day, it's virtually impossible to have a deep relationship with every single person. And so it's a bittersweet job to be a sower because you know not every seed that you sow will end up being this huge among us, whether it's a tree or a bush or a little plant, filled with fruit. And even the ones that do have fruit, not all of them will be bent over by being so filled with fruit that they, they almost can't stand. That there'll be some that barely have any and others that will have that amount of fruit that practically bends it over. I suspect that in many times in our lives, that that can be a little discouraging. And especially if it's us that's the, either the sower or, or the, the plant that's trying to grow and have fruit, because we're kind of both in the parable, we're both the sower and the, and the seed, and being able to deal with the fact that not everything we do is going to be a brilliant success and that there's plenty of things as we're going through the sowing motions that will actually cause failure. Whether it be birds or thorns or hard ground or whatever the case may be, not every seed that is sown will grow and bear fruit. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't know about you, but to me that's a bit sad. And especially when you translate it into human beings, whether they're in Hamilton or halfway across the world, when you go through life knowing that not every seed, not every person is going to have their lives bloom into fruit, that can be a bit overwhelming if you think about it. You know, and, and the interesting thing about it is we understand that sometimes it's choices that the, the, the seed makes and sometimes, like the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, sometimes it's choices that other people make 
that keeps abundant, God's abundant love from reaching them. But either way, we know that there's plenty of Lazaruses out there that perhaps never really bear fruit and yet are still loved by God. You know, I, I hope that we never interpret the parable as saying that there's absolutely no way that God's love can reach them. But at the same time, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is the one that reaches them. We have to keep sowing. And the other aspect about that is, is the fact that the, but the fruit. And I'm sure all of us would like to bear fruit a hundredfold. Certainly in our own gardens, we would love to have the tomato plant, have 8,000 tomatoes on it, and, and the potatoes and the corn and everything just be overwhelming with food and have so much that you have to give it away before it goes bad. But the reality is, is we truly do not know when the seed hits the soil, even if we're relatively sure that it hits good soil, that it's going to be a great performer that we're so excited about, or one that has three tomatoes and is done. Uh, I'm going to quote this so I make sure I, I never want to misquote a bishop, but Bishop Tim Smith of the North Carolina Synod said this, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the number of apples in a seed. And, and then the explanation continues. It goes on, most apples have around five seeds, give or take. And obviously, especially those that get eaten by people, a lot of those seeds end up in the trash or somewhere where they don't grow. But yet, even if we planted those seeds... We don't know if it's going to be a high-performing tree. And it says here that on average, an average good tree has about 500 apples a year once it's in good performance and then usually lasts around eight years before it starts cutting off production and just becomes a regular tree. But at the same time, we all know of apple trees that only have maybe half that. And some of them rot, or depending on the weather, some of them don't get fully developed. But still, the miracle of the fact that that seed still bears fruit. Whether it's as much as we want it, it still is a major miracle. So what kind of, the question becomes then, when we're sowing the seed, what kind of environment do we need to help create as part of God's plan for the seeds that do fall on good soil to bear as much fruit as their potential allows. And, and once again, it, it's hard to say because every environment's different. Certainly, even though we were singing about rain, we could desperately use some rain. Whereas a month ago, we were desperately hoping for a day not raining. But every environment is different. You know, we, we go back to the story of the rich man and Lazarus. For Lazarus, his biggest needs were just to have enough food and clothes and shelter for him to have any chance of developing any potential other than just being suffering at the gate. And the rich man needed to be able to have some empathy and, so, and an outside worldview that takes him from just having stuff and eating well to making sure that the person at the gate has an opportunity for their potential. When our seeds are planted, there are different ways of, of helping the plants grow, of being more than just a tree when we're supposed to bear fruit. And that often comes down to how you and I help each other grow and help our community grow and even the farther community outside of Butler County. Because as a family, as a Christian family spread throughout the world, we are the sowers. But we're also the feet on the ground that help create the conditions for people to succeed or fail, depending on what we do and what we choose. We have an opportunity to be the best sowers we can be because God has made it so. 
that his grace and mercy that we sing about and read about and hear about is free for the taking. We don't have to hope that God's grace will rain down from heaven because it's already here with us. There may be droughts or famines, but there'll never be a drought or famine of grace. So how will we help create the environment for all the fruit to be successful, or all the seeds to be successful? And of course, as we, we talk about baptism next week, one of the ways, of course, is, is through education, through catechism and so forth, and, and the whole community affecting the kids as they grow up rather than just a few teachers here or there. But it's a lifelong commitment. Those of you with gardens understand that it isn't just planting a few seeds in April or whenever it is that you start your garden and then just letting them go for the rest of the summer. At least the successful gardens usually require a lot of effort. The whole life of the garden. Truly, as a Christian, we really don't have a retirement. Because as long as we draw breath on this side, we're sowers. We're builders of the environment, making sure that the seeds, all seeds, no matter their age, no matter their gender or their race or whatever the case may be, are sowed and watered, sometimes weeded and protected. And just like a garden, sometimes that can feel like a burden. But as we talked about in weeks past, we have someone that walks with us and bears the yoke with us so that the work would be done. But rather than being a burden, it would be a work of joy and peace and especially celebration when the fruit starts coming. Today, we receive the word both in spoken and tangible and we go forth to plant some more seeds. May you go forth in peace. Amen. And we continue with our hymn, Light Dawns on a Weary World.
the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. For those that are able, please kneel. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. And we especially lift up Jim and George, Doug, Jack, Keith, Kathy, Tristan, Sean, Aura and Dorothy, Randy, Sarah, Patty, Rachel, Amy, Joan, Yvonne, Phil, Demi, Gail, Frank, Vivian, Clint and his family, Sandy, Anita, Paul, Robert, Jackie, Juanita, and all those we lift up in our hearts. For those who are doubting, renew their faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And gracious Lord, as part of that wider community, we give thanks for First Lutheran and their pastor, Brian, as well as Power Source Ministries and their pastors, Mike and Nikki. Be with them and us as we share the role of sowers and as seeds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died, and especially Nathan Soderblom, Bishop of Uppsala, whom we commemorate today. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's stand and in place give peace to one another and you as well online and in Radio Land. God's peace or fist bumps to the kids. <laughs> Peace. And now let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. And for our online and radio listeners, if you already have your elements, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. We close with blessed assurance. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.